Welcome back to Smash's Kitchen. We're here, we're live. It's freezing outside, but it's warming here. It's actually gonna get a lot hotter. <laughs> Guys, I'm really excited. We have Canadian, that's right, Canadian, Prince Edward Island Melt Peck oysters, fresh off the boat. Well, they came in on a boat and then, you know, driven here, but they're fresh as you can get them here, okay? What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick, easy tip on shucking an oyster without getting this thing through your hand. I've done it, it hurts. And then I'm gonna prepare a nice mignonette to go along with your oyster. Come in close, guys, and I'm gonna show you how to do this properly. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to clean the oysters. Always clean your oysters, it's very important. You don't wanna be putting this in your mouth and eating sand, okay? Um, you can just get a, um, a simple brush, clean it off, run it under some cold water, and you're good to go. What you'll see on the bottom end here of the oyster, you'll see a little gap. Sometimes you won't see the gap, it'll be hard, you'll kinda of have to chisel your way down to find that, but that's gonna be your pecking point when you're starting with your oyster. You can get these anywhere, it's a simple oyster shucker. I left this thing, I don't know where. I had people coming over, couldn't find my oyster shucker, went to the old toolbox, picked out a flathead screwdriver, it does the job. As long as you know the technique, you could use anything. I always bring a cloth with me for two reasons. One, it gives you good grip on the oyster when you're about to shuck it. Nobody wants to have a razor sharp edge in their hand while you're shucking an oyster. It's dangerous, okay? Get yourself a cloth, find that pecking point. It's very simple, it's a simple twist just like so. All I did was I applied a little bit of pressure, simple twist, and you can see already that the oyster has opened slightly. And a very, very important thing is you don't wanna lose any of these juices, okay? So when you're shucking your oyster, don't go crazy, don't be flipping it around, keep it steady. Now what I like to do is I'll simply grab my shucker, run it through the top of the shell, okay? And I'm just gonna slightly open the oyster and pull this apart, okay? And you will see that you have a perfect oyster. Grab your shucker, your flathead screwdriver, your fork, whatever it is you're using, okay? And just be gentle with the oyster. You gotta be really gentle with it and just lift it right off the top. And you wanna keep everything intact. Very important thing, there is a little membrane here that you want to detach from the oyster, okay? It's very important you do that because you don't want to serve this to someone and they're sitting there slurping it and nothing's happening except getting a whole bunch of sand and oyster juice down your throat. You don't want that. You want that oyster to go down smooth and we're going to prepare a really nice condiment to go alongside this. Basically what we're going to do here is we're going to prepare something real simple, easy to do, that's going to complement our really nice oysters. This is called a mignonette, a mignonette. Some sort of uh, tartness that you're going to add to your oyster. There's so many different types of mignonettes. My favorite one, the most refreshing one that I like to do is a cucumber apple cider vinegar mignonette. So it's very simple. You start off with simple apple cider vinegar with some brown sugar. I have about a cup of apple cider vinegar and about a tablespoon of brown sugar. I know it sounds like a lot of sugar out there for you diabetics, but believe me, you're gonna need it, okay? Next thing, guys, get your razor sharp knife. I'm pretty sure this one's razor sharp. Um, and you're gonna wanna finely dice that cucumber, okay? Simple thing, you wanna cut your cucumber in very thin strands. And what you're gonna do is simple. Use your hands as a guide, and you're gonna to wanna to cut very, very thin strands of this cucumber, okay? And you're gonna turn it this way, and what you're gonna do is just run your knife and create really, really small dices with this cucumber. When you are putting this on top of your oyster, which is very important, okay? I'm gonna give us a quick mix. When you're adding your mixture to the oyster, nobody wants to eat a big chunk of cucumber. The oyster is the main event here, not the cucumber, okay? All this cucumber is gonna do is add a little bit of crunch and freshness to this mignonette, okay? You're gonna give her a little bit of mix, okay? And you'll see it's got beautiful colors. Very simple, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, finely, finely diced cucumber, and you have yourself a beautiful cucumber apple cider vinaigrette mignonette.
Now we've shucked a really beautiful Melpec Canadian oyster. Now it's all about the presentation. Here's a very, very simple tip when you're plating. Now, I just have a really small plate because I'm gonna be plating one oyster. If you have family and friends coming over for a gathering and you wanna present it um, on a bigger scale, that's fine. Just maximize the size that you have and I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna work. Basically, when you're plating, I usually use the center of the plate as my, as my peaking point, okay? In this case, we're doing an oyster, so I want my oyster to be the center of attention. You can build all around it with garnishes and side plates and side dishes and sauces, but at the end of the day, the oyster is the main event. So we're gonna have that front and center, and then we're gonna build around it. First thing, kosher salt. Kosher salt is really nice when you're using oysters. Why? Because it's a thicker grain of salt. You don't wanna have table salt, anything too fine, because what's gonna happen, it's gonna get lost on the plate. You need it to stand out. So I'm simply just gonna add some kosher salt right to the center of the plate. Again, I'm building from the center outwards, okay? We have your beautiful Melpec oyster, perfectly shucked, all the juices. I'm just gonna lay that center right on top of the kosher salt. Now, you have a 3D image of this oyster. It's popping out of the plate. Now we can build around. Simple, easy things. What complements an oyster? Fresh lemons. I'm gonna take this lemon, I'm gonna cut it like so. I'm just gonna grab a small, tiny wedge. Why? Because it's one oyster. Again, if you're making a massive amount, cut a whack of lemon wedges, build around that oyster, it will always look nice. So again, I'm just gonna add the lemon to the plate. Couple other things I wanna use is some purple and green amaranth. Now, this is not the easiest thing to find, but you can use chive tips, you can use lemongrass tips, you can use popcorn shoots, anything that looks nice and has nice color. Again, this is all for presentation. I'm gonna line this right up on top of the oyster, okay? And last but not least, we have that really wonderful cucumber mignonette that we made. We're gonna take this, we're just gonna dabble a little bit on top of the oyster, not too much, because again, you don't want it to take away from the oyster itself, just like so. Again, I like to finish off my oyster with a little bit of heat. I'm using fresh Tabasco sauce here, just a little bit, you don't wanna add too much. A lot of people like to use fresh horseradish. I'm going the, the, the Tabasco route. You got your amaranth here for your finished garnish right there. It's one of nature's finest aphrodisiacs. Your guests are gonna be blown away with this. Serve it like this all the time and I promise you, people will be talking about it for the rest of the night.